Hello. In this video, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the chemoselectivity of carbonyl reduction reactions. And in this particular context, I'm going to use a molecule that has a couple of different functional groups, two carbonyl functional groups, uh, a ketone and an ester. Uh, and I've thrown an alkene into the mix for reasons uh, that will become clear. Actually, the main reason is that the alkene is also a functional group that can be uh, reduced. So let's talk about chemoselective reduction. Uh, there are three different functional groups on here uh, that we could reduce, uh, the alkene, the ketone, and the ester. And so an ideal chemoselective reduction uh, is one in which only one of these functional groups gets reduced. So we reduce the ester and nothing else. Or we reduce the uh, alkene and nothing else. Or we reduce the ketone and nothing else. Any of these three reactions would be a chemoselective reduction because we're only reducing one of the possible functional groups that could react. Uh, and I'm going to bring my, my three chemoselective reduction products up here to the top. Uh, I want to clear a little bit of room. So I want to discuss some of the reducing agents that you've probably encountered by this time. Um, and I'm making the assumption that most folks cover the reactions of alkenes before they cover the reduction of carbonyl compounds. But it's possible you've covered the reduction of carbonyl compounds and are just now and are, and are going to cover the, the, the reactions of alkenes later. Um, so I'm going to cover three. Uh, reducing agents. Uh, I'm going to cover those that are responsible for catalytic hydrogenation. Right? And, and in general, what I'm talking about is metal catalyst uh, and hydrogen H2 gas. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about sodium borohydride and I'm going to talk about lithium aluminum hydride. I know there are other reducing agents. There's some that are even discussed in the context of these and similar functional groups. But for the most, for right now, we'll talk about these three. Okay. And since this video comes on the tail end of videos in lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride, uh, you can probably already guess where what the chemoselectivity is going to be for those two. But I want to start with catalytic hydrogenation. If you've already covered the reactions of alkenes, then you know that catalytic hydrogenation is a reaction that converts an alkene to an alkane in matters where stereochemistry is important. Um, you get uh, syn addition, uh, so the hydrogen atoms that are being added are being added in the same phase of the molecule. Uh, and um, the metal... A uh, catalyst that is being used can be either a uh, solid, you know, metal, metal can be uh, heterogeneous. I have a stack that I've replaced with the, the new tech on computers. Matt yeah, the, met, uh, the metal can either be a heterogeneous catalyst, so it, it could be, you know, we're talking about metal nanoparticles, uh, metal coated on surfaces, right? uh, metal will cross, it could also be homogeneous, uh, or we're looking at discrete, we're looking at, at soluble compounds with ligands, uh, hold them into solution. I was going to write discrete, I never remember which discrete I want to use here. So, and, you know, if you've studied this reaction, you actually know that there are a lot of transition metals 
that will work. Platinum, palladium, nickel. So these are these are all in the same uh, same group. But also ruthenium and rhodium and even iron and many others. Okay. Now. We need to be, you know, in a, in a molecule that has uh, an alkene and a carbonyl functional group in it, we need to be careful. So let, let me put my ketone back in. That some metal catalysts will reduce both functional groups. Some catalysts are going to reduce both functional groups. Some catalysts are only going to reduce the alkene. There are a few things that are going to reduce that carbonyl, um, but there are some that will only reduce the carbonyl. Uh, uh, we're not going to necessarily talk about those, but they're out there. Okay. Um, but I wanted to give you a reliable one that was here in the middle, uh, a catalyst that only reduced the alkene, because we have all kinds of other reagents that are pretty selective for the, the carbonyl. Anything that gets attached to a piece so. of equipment, that is entirely happy to make my problem. Okay. So, uh, one thing that was very selective for alkenes over carbonyl groups is palladium, specifically palladium coated on carbon. So here is a reagent that you can use to selectively reduce alkenes over carbonyl groups. And in fact, let's uh, swap now out our more complicated molecule. This is a way to generate a reduction of the alkene while ignoring the carbonyl functional groups. Sodium borohydride as a hydride transfer reduction is selective aldehydes and ketones. Uh, and as this is coming on the tail end of a video series that introduced both it and lithium aluminum hydride uh, and their differences, and I just realized here that I, my, my ester grew an extra carbon on the structure of some of my products. So I apologize for that. You may have been watching and like, wait, wait, why did the methyl group become an ethyl group? Well, it's because Dr. Norris wasn't paying attention uh, and lost track of the number of carbons. <clears throat> happens to, to everybody. So if it happens to you, don't feel bad. But just learn to, to, to keep track so that you can avoid being embarrassing to the entire world on a YouTube video. Okay. Yep. Sodium borohydride is selective for aldehydes and ketones. Uh, it's because sodium borohydride is not the most uh, reactive of all uh, reducing agents, and so it's only going to react with the, the ketone in this molecule. And then now we know that lithium aluminum hydride is a more reactive, therefore it is a less selective reducing agent. But still, it's selective for carbonyl uh, and, and carbon heteroatom, so, so other atoms besides carbon and hydrogen, over, you know, carbon, carbon, bonds. So lithium aluminum hydride uh, L-I-A-L-H for um, following aqueous workup will reduce the ketone but it will also reduce the ester. This reaction is Slightly selective. It was selective for the carbonyl groups over the uh, alkene, but it still is going to reduce both the ketone and the ester. So 
question then remains, what do I need to do to reduce just the ester and not the ketone? Well, of the three types of reagents that I just talked about, none of them will do it. There is a way. There is a way, uh, and it involves something called a protecting group. And so what you will ultimately want to do is somehow prevent the ketone from reacting. So to temporarily change it into another functional group, reduce the ester, and then regenerate the ketone. And that's going to be a topic for another video as well. This wraps up the series of videos on the reduction of carbonyl compounds. Thanks for watching.